very good. We are recording. Okay. How are you? Hi, I'm good. That's wonderful. Um, so, did you have, like, an email interview or something that you did through us as well? Uh, no, just a, um, just this. Okay, okay, that must have been, um, someone else then. Um, okay, so basically what we're going to be doing is, um, I will, like, introduce Candace a little bit and yeah. say who I am, just so anybody who's watching yeah. knows. Yeah. Um, and then I can introduce you, and we'll just start off with some really basic questions. Okay. Like, where do you live? <laughs> Why do you write? Those kind of things. You can tell your age if you want, or your hobbies. Yeah. Um, and then um, you can tell me what pieces you have in this issue, because I know you have four, so that's like <laughs> that's a lot. That's very impressive. Um, and then the questions that I sent you, those yeah. were the basic questions that I had. I do have some others, but okay, yeah. It's just we just do a really conversational interview. It's just me and you yeah, talking, yeah. you know, like nobody's watching. Yeah. Um. So things might pop up as you. Yeah, yeah. Bring about certain topics, um, and things of that nature. Um. So I even made notes because that's how paranoid <laughs> I am about being organized. <laughs> um. Okay, so I know I've been emailing you, but my name is Cheyenne Zaremba, and I am the production coordinator for Canvas. So that means that I'm kind of the person who plans out when things are going to occur, and then I make sure that people are doing their jobs and stuff like that. So it's, it's a very fun position. Um, and the interview that we're doing today is for the Canvas Fall 2014 issue. So as of this issue, Canvas has been running for more than a year. So... That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and I'm interviewing you today. And tell me your name. Uh, Brooke DeGia. Okay. And um, where do you live? I live uh, in Manhasset, New York. Okay. So where's that? Like, that's... Because I have no idea. <laughs> that's on Long Island. So the island oh, part of New York. Not the big city. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. So how's the weather there? Is it cold like it is here? Yeah, it's getting, uh, it's getting pretty cold now. We had, you know, a mild summer. Now it's... Yeah, it's getting pretty cold. Yeah, yeah, it it, it kind of sucks. I'm not looking forward to the winter. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, tell me a little bit about um, like your writing career. I guess you could say. Um. Well, I've been writing, I guess, for as long as I can. You know, just for fun. When I was younger, mm -hmm. I really um, in third grade, I had this really great teacher who you know inspired us to write a lot. You know, a lot more than previous years, and I guess that's when it really started where I was doing it all the time. And um, only really now in, like, the past couple of years have I considered it as, like, an actual, like, career option maybe as an adult. Because um, mm -hmm. when I was younger, that kind of seemed like, oh, that inaccessible kind of career. But um, right now, you know, I actually – I really want to do that. I want to major in English when I go to college. So, so far up to now, it's been kind of, like, a hobby kind of thing. But now it's more, like, serious – wanting to do it as a real career in the future. That's cool. So do you want to be like a novelist then, or do you want to be like a journalist or like a poet? Yeah, you know, I'm still on that. I'm not sure because <laughs> I would love writing, you know, for like uh, journalism, like for a newspaper or something like that. That would still be wonderful. Right. I think any of those would be great. Um, of course, I would love to write a book, maybe fiction, but that's, I feel like that's a lot more daunting than <laughs> It, it does yeah. kind of seem that way, yeah. Yeah, yeah I would. Yeah. So maybe that's a very cool journalist or something. Yeah, or maybe a poet. That would be that would be cool. Would you ever consider like teaching English, or is the teaching not so much for you? You know, I feel like I feel like that would be cool. as, like you know, in addition to writing, like teaching, right, like, right, right. Like, yeah, and actually like have like a steady income, and then you know, <laughs> fun, a dependable income. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so it, it that, like, I, I, I'm not against that, so I would see, like, as I get older, that would be. Oh, well, that's, that's very cool. Okay, and then tell me, um, what pieces do you have in this issue? I have uh, two poems titled uh, My Astronauts and Across Our Lanes, one nonfiction piece, and mm -hmm. um, one play, which is called Alzheimer's Restaurant. Yes, and I will tell you right now that all of our um, all of our prose readers and raters absolutely loved your play. I mean, oh, of course they did because it's in the issue, but they loved how humorous it was and all of like the hidden 
puns in it. It was Thank they loved you. it so much. Thank you. Yeah, that was um, that's the one I'm most proud of, probably. Oh, that that's one. good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so your two poems. Um, where did you get the inspiration for those? Like, where do you usually get the inspiration for poetry? Usually, it was like I feel like. For me, it comes to like really random points. I think I was watching, I think I was watching a commercial or something and it was a commercial really? for a car. Yeah. And it was kind of like, you know, all those like driving things by yourself. And I kind of thought about how like, and you know, sometimes when I'm surfing on the internet, I'll come across something that seems really like, yeah. Yeah. There was on this, uh, it's this online thing called like, uh, the dictionary of obscure sorrows. And this guy, um, uh, creates like words, like actual like words. They're not real, of course, and it's not a real dictionary, right. but that describe like abstract feelings. And that one was like, if the word was called sonder and it was the idea that like, like everyone around you has like a life as complex as your own. And like, you w might never know about that. So I, yeah, I caught it. I kind of thought about that as like when people are driving on a highway, like they're in their own little car bubble. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's kind of where I got that idea from. Wow, that no, that's super cool. I have never heard of that. I'm gonna have to go look that up when I'm done. <laughs> it's a cool, it's a cool website. Yeah, well, it's definitely great for writing prompts. Yeah, definitely. yeah. Okay, so then what about your other poem, My Astronauts? The other one I kind of thought of, thought about is like the, the basic idea was like the metaphor, like the meaning behind that was the idea that like. People in like really foreign environments or wherever they are can still find like an aspect of home and an aspect of like something familiar, something that just like humans can do. So that one I was just kind of like musing about because when I was um, away during the summer, like obviously I was away from home for like a long time. I think it was like three right. weeks. And I'd been, I'd been to like summer camps before and stuff like that for eight weeks. So that was like an extended period of time. So I just kind of took, that was more of like an internal kind of inspiration thing as opposed to, yeah seeing something else out there yeah well that's that's pretty cool because i know um some poets will say that they only get inspiration from outside sources yeah yeah you know it's they have to see something they have to yeah. hear something or read something so it's cool when people can write from what's within them yeah and but make it applicable yeah. to other people so yeah. i mean your poetry was amazing all of your stuff uh -huh. was amazing <laughs> thank obviously. you thank you, thank you. That's, so, that's so nice um let me just check to make sure this is still recording because i don't want to be yeah, uh, make sure that, yeah. Yes, yes, all right. Okay. Yes, okay, and we are still recording. Excellent. Um, now I have another window of you that popped up, but I don't know where that came from. Okay, okay. Um, so give me, like, uh, like a brief description of, we'll start with, like, your nonfiction piece. Nonfiction. For people who maybe, yeah, maybe they didn't read it, or maybe after this they're going to read it because they should. <laughs> um, but just give me, like, a brief. Uh, like a brief summary of what it's about. Okay, so um, when I over the summer I was away at a creative writing program because you know that's where a lot of these things came out of. I was writing like every day, obviously there because they those oh, were our assignments. So and it was just kind of like you know this whole atmosphere of writing. So um, when we were when I was there, I made a really a really great group of friends, and um, of course they tried to you know like set me up, of course, and all that <laughs> stuff stuff that I not not comfortable with and so right. that was the kind of that was like the the real like story basis behind that and then I tried to do a um I tried to make it more like humorous because <laughs> writing all this serious stuff uh, and everything it was fun to write something like a comic essay and so right. I I tried to like make the situation seem like funny because obviously when I was in it it wasn't as like I wasn't laughing as much <laughs> yeah so. right right I tried to make it seem like more humorous and I had just finished reading at that point one of David Sedaris's new books, uh, Let's Explore Diabetes with Owls. And that's like a whole collection of comic essays. So I kind of thought, why don't I try to do something like that? Make one of my like everyday situations a more like funny, humorous essay that still has like an important meaning and a message in it, but right. also like it's not so like dark or anything like that, you know, kind right, of right, yeah. piece. So that's where that's how I got that one. That that's very cool, uh, and I'm gonna have to look up that book now as well. Yeah, it was, um, it was but it was good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to read it. Um, humor, as you mentioned, it's something that we noticed in, or I noticed at least when I was reading over your pieces in both of your um, your nonfiction and your play. Yeah. There's a lot of humor. Is that something that you like to work with a lot? It was actually something that I had uh, never really 
done heavily before because I never really considered myself, you know, super funny or able to make right. jokes like that. <laughs> Even when I submitted it, I was kind of kind of wondering, like, are they going to get the humor? Are they going to get it? Right. Is it just going to fall flat? So um, now that I know that it's been like well received and that I am capable right. of doing it, I want to do it more. So oh, well, that's before, good. Before I hadn't really yeah. done it, but now of course I like it. <laughs> Well, that's, that's cool. That's cool to be able to find new things that you're good at that you didn't think you would be good at. Yeah. Um, okay, so then your your play, Elfheimer's Restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Um, give me a little summary of what that's about. So um, the inspiration for that came from uh, my grandfather, who had in his late years uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I'd experienced it firsthand, and um, I was – walking again at this creative writing program I was walking along the street uh one night with my friends and I saw like an old man with hit with a walker or something and it, I couldn't hear what he was saying because I was too far away but another woman it looked like a stranger was trying to help him it seemed like he didn't really know what was going on so obviously I don't know if he had had it or not but it, I kind of thought about it and I was thinking about it all night and then uh then I kind of thought why don't I again, write a kind of humorous piece about this that has, like, the when you look at it more, has the message underneath it. Sorry, that was my computer. That, that's, okay. <laughs> okay. that's okay. That's uh, okay. It says it says what time it is every hour. Yeah, and so that's, <laughs> that's right. then, then I thought, like, I, I wouldn't want to write a play, like, so serious about, like, it's, right. like, one person who had it. I wanted to kind of fill it with, like, again, like, puns and stuff like that and kind of this, like, weird, absurd situation, and that's... That's how I got to that piece. Well, it's it's a very good piece, and when you when you start reading it, um, at least this is my thought process. I was like, how is she gonna work Alzheimer's into a play? Yeah. You know. But then when I finished reading it, I was really really impressed, and I I thought throughout the characters were very vibrant. Did you draw inspiration from real people for them? Uh, yeah, for the for the Russian guy Grigor. Um, uh, like part of my family is Russian, so I thought, oh, why not make them that? And then um, he, him being like just that tiny detail, it wasn't mentioned in the actual play, but him being like a concert pianist. My, oh. Yeah, it was like that was just in like the character bio, like not an right. actual play. My grandfather was a concert pianist, so that was like my little connection there. Um, okay. For um, the other characters, I don't think they were based like so explicitly on other people. I think maybe just mm -hmm. like things I had experienced and like other people I'd gotten to know just like little bits and pieces, but right. mostly yes. was, like, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's cool. And that's, that's kind of cool that you say he's a concert pianist to have yeah. like that, that extra thing. Cause I know that, yeah. um, writers will do that a lot. Well, they'll write a character and there'll be a lot of things that you don't know about them, but when you are writing them, yeah. it makes all of the difference to know those kind of things. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, so you you have written at least for this issue that you submitted you have three different like genres I guess you wrote yeah. poetry you wrote yeah. nonfiction and then you wrote a play so you're very versatile yeah. um, is there one that you like to write more than the other um, you know the the play that I wrote was like the first time or not the first time but I haven't written m many plays so when mm -hmm. I did it you know like that's something I was just very recently introduced to doing so. I found that very fun and enjoyable, mm -hmm. but in terms of the past, not going forward, I mostly liked writing uh, poetry the best, probably out of those three. But mm -hmm. again, like with experiencing new things and stuff, like right. I wouldn't like I like writing all of those at this point, point. Right. and it just right. kind of depends on the mood I'm in to see like exactly. oh, would I write this, would I write that. But yeah, in terms of the past, it's been poetry. Okay, okay. Have you ever written um, fiction? Yeah, I have. I didn't uh, submit any because, uh, you know, I used to write fiction, like, a ton when I was mm -hmm. younger. And so this was all about, like, trying to branch out into other categories and stuff. See, right. Because, like, um, you know, experimenting with, like, nonfiction playwriting uh, and those two new categories. But I do like I do like writing fiction, and I have written fiction before and, like, done stuff with that. But I always mm -hmm. feel like it hasn't been as, like... It's harder, I feel like, to write fiction. It's harder for you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> well, I, I know there are some people who can only write one certain thing yeah. or another. So the fact that you can write in multiple genres I, is actually, it's really, really impressive. Oh, so thank you. <laughs> um, 
So what is your, I mean, we kind of talked about this a little bit already, but what is like your writing process like? And does it yeah. differ between the different genres? Yeah, it probably, um, at this point, uh, like, I used to just be able to like sit down at my computer and just start writing, like free writing, and then right. have something come out of that. Um, I've, now I like more to like, I keep notebooks with me wherever I go. And if I see something interesting, um, I write it down. Or if I think up an image or something that seems kind of worthwhile, I write it down. And then this is mostly for poetry. Once those images and stuff and those little notes that I have start connecting in my notebook, like I see connections, then I can like construct an actual piece of poetry from that. Um, in terms of nonfiction, that's just basically me waiting for like something exciting to happen. <laughs> something to happen. And then and then deciding, okay, I'll write I'll write something about that now. <laughs> yeah. And then for play, that's it's probably also the same, like waiting for something that sticks out really that I observe and then right. putting that into an actual piece. So I guess for plays and nonfiction, it's kind of like external inspiration. Right. And then for poetry, it's pro and fiction. When I do write, that's probably like internal, like images that I've thought of or right. musings, I guess. Yeah. Right. So are you are you a very visual writer for any genre? You know, mm, probably I probably I am. I probably have to like mm -hmm. pick stuff down or draw arrows and see like on the paper. Right. So yeah, I guess I would probably be a more visual writer with all my notes and stuff yeah right right okay and then um when they write um i don't know i guess this could apply for nonfiction or plays or fiction um do you write do you come up with plot first or do you come up with characters or scenarios or how does that usually go usually i think it's easier for me to come up with the characters themselves and like the details and the stuff that really makes them unique and then see how they could possibly interact with each other and form the plot out of that. Um, and yeah, usually it starts with the idea and the character and like the essential message that I want to get across and then taking right. that message and then forming characters that connect to that message and then finally a plot line. So I think for me, plot probably comes very like, wow. yeah. Okay. All right. That's very cool. All right. Well, once again, I'm going to check to make sure this is still recording. Very important. <laughs> Okay, yep, and we're still good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let me... There you are. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's see. Those were all of the questions, I think, that I had pre-written down. And I know there was some more that, as we were talking, yeah. came up. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about the writing camp that you went to. I'm interested in that. What was oh. that like? That was, uh, I took a, the Columbia University pre-writing, uh, well, pre-college writing program. They have mm -hmm. this whole um, pre-college program based in, I think, I did the New York City one, obviously, that's much okay. much closer to me. They have ones in, like, Barcelona and the Middle East or something for people who oh, wow. go internationally. Yeah, it's, like, a big thing. It was for three weeks, and they have, like, two sessions, like, one three-week session, one three-week session. Oh, and right, okay. So that way it's, like... Uh, a lot of people can come over right. span of six weeks. And right. uh, I've been to uh, creative writing programs before, but those were only for one week and they weren't as intensive. But mm. this one, um, this one was really, really great. I really enjoyed it um, because with the, obviously with more time with three weeks, you could do a lot more. The teachers really got to know you. It was very like, um, very intimate because uh, at least for the creative writing, I don't know for like, they had a ton of other subjects like science and economics and all that stuff. Um, for the creative writing class, it was probably like for, in my class, like 15 people around one table. And we just like edit our work, uh, read other work, um, like, you know, watch clips and stuff, watch movies and stuff to get inspiration. Oh, okay. That's very cool. It was, yeah, I really, uh, I really enjoyed it. And then we'd get like a homework assignment, probably like work on a poem or work on play right. or essay or I think it was divided into like free verse and then like long prose short prose all that right. stuff so you still have right. flexibility within each of those so right. it's like a strict piece and it was right. just a really um a really good program it was a great atmosphere because you know everyone was interested in writing everyone was super nice and really you know right. a lot of constructive uh suggestions so that was like for any other like people who would consider doing summer writing programs and stuff like that one was definitely really 
worthwhile. It was a great okay. program. That's very cool. Um, and then your your bio said that you were um, published in Columbia University's. Yeah. Um, what is that? Tell me about that. Each um, each session they have for the writing program, they have uh, what's called like a lit mag, literary magazine. They just call it lit mag for short. And um, uh, each session they come up with like a different title, and it's usually like a small pamphlet thing that they hand out at the end of the program. And you mm-hmm. had to uh, you had to submit to that also, uh, and they took about I think they said they usually get a, over like 200 submissions, and they wow. usually take like 15 or so. So it was like a really you know like thing I guess to like it wasn't like selective or trying to be like oh we'll only choose a few, but it was a very like intimate, very prestigious. Kind of, yeah, I mean kind of like that, and I you know I submitted obviously thinking like oh I'll just hedge my bets and see, like, if I can right. get one. one right. Piece. The worst they can do is say no. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, luckily they did choose a piece, which was great. And so now I have that. And so that was just, like, an extra thing they do there for the writing classes. That's very cool. That's very cool. Have you been published other places besides that and Canvas, obviously? Um, uh, there's this other magazine called Sincerely Magazine that um, I'm supposed to be forthcoming in. It's, like, January 2015. It's, like, the first issue. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll see how that works out because, obviously, that's a ways away. Um, the organization Creative Communications, I'm going to be, uh, like, I'm forthcoming in the uh, anthology of, for the summer uh, section, um, the okay. anthology of poetry and the uh, anthology of essays because okay. um uh, I submitted to that, and then I've, in this po- at this point, I've submitted to like a bunch of other, you know, literary journals, but I'm still right. waiting for a response. So right, yep, <laughs> yeah, gotta, gotta wait for feedback. Yep, yep, yeah. Okay, and then it says your bio also said that you have received keys from the Scholastic Writing Award. Yes, yes, for the regional section. Uh, last year, I submitted uh, two fiction pieces to my fiction mm-hmm. pieces. Um, to the to the contest and I got a uh, for each one a silver key. For oh wow! That. So that was that was nice. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. That, that's really really cool. Yeah. Um. So for when you write, I guess for anything, like will you do fantasy or science fiction, or are you like more of a realistic person or romance, or you know, is there a certain thing that you can write but better than others, or you enjoy two more? I guess. Um. You know, I really, I really like fantasy and science fiction. I love that stuff. Um, I don't know if I'd be able to come up with something as, you know, like come up with an elaborate like mythology right. or something like that. You know? Yeah, it can get complex. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would love to be able to in the future. I love that stuff. Um, at this point, yeah, I think it's more like a realistic story with like some, I guess, fantasy elements abstract infused. Yeah, because like for. My play, Alzheimer's Restaurant, obviously that's not something that could happen. Right, every right, day, right. But it starts out as a more realistic setting and then it becomes a little bit more. It's a little surreal. Yeah, that's what, that, that was definitely what I was going for. So I guess like that kind of stuff I can do right now. Uh, romance, um, not very good at, no. No? Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. We're just. Yeah, I love reading it, but. Right. <laughs> right, right. Well, probably not. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, um, so I think those were probably all of the questions that I had that I can think of right yeah. now. Is there anything that you want me to ask you? Is there anything else that you want to talk about? I think we've pretty much touched on everything that I could have thought of. Yeah. Okay, so. um, the reason I ask that is because sometimes writers have, because I know I do, they'll have specific things in their plays that they want to be discussed, you know, or their stories or whatever. Yeah. Um, questions don't always read into that. Yeah. Um, well, you kind of touched upon it with, like, saying all the puns and stuff in Alzheimer's Restaurant. Like, yeah. I definitely wanted, like, attention to that because that, like, I'm so proud of. But, yeah, we we got on that already. Yeah. Even just the names, they were they were great. Even <laughs> the title, it was all fantastic. <laughs> I know that, and I said this already, but our prose readers absolutely loved it. Like when we uh, we have our our first uh, editorial meeting where we sit and we go through the pieces uh, and we talk about cool. which ones we would like to have in. Yeah. Um, 
And when they came to that piece, all of the prose readers started chit-chatting about it. They're like, oh, yeah, that's this one. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to have to read it now because primarily I'm a poetry reader. Oh. So I don't use the prose beforehand. Oh. But over, like, editing and copy editing yeah, and stuff, yeah. you read it, like, three or four times. So you kind of get in touch yeah. with the story. Yeah. So, uh, it's very cool. Um, that's amazing. So then are there any... Are there any questions that you have for me before we finish up the interview? Um, I think um, I think I'm good. Yeah, I think okay. we answered everything pretty much. That's good. That's fantastic. All right. So, um, thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you had a good time. I did. I mean, I certainly enjoyed talking to you. <laughs> thank it's you. It's very cool to be able to um, listen to how it is other writers' brains yeah. work. Yeah. Because yes. sometimes you think you can be a little crazy with the way you do things. <laughs> well, you're like, oh, I'm really not so far off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, let me make sure that this was all recorded. Yeah, that's important. And it was. All right, let me let me just pause our recording here. Oh well, hold on a moment. Here we go.